Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan. I think I've seen most of you in classes before, so good to see you all again today. And today we're going to be talking about Bobby Fisher. So as always, I was thinking about what should I show with Bobby Fisher. There's plenty of famous games that we could go over. Um, I thought I would take in an end game perspective um, just to hopefully try to see some new positions that he has played. Not necessarily the ones he won or not even necessarily uh, the ones that, you know, we have to just call it instructive. It's just interesting positions that I found. Um, and I thought, okay, this could be very, very useful to go over. So we're going to look at some end games, uh, depending on how much time we have and how things go. Uh, we will see. We'll see how it goes. Let's go ahead and get started. It's white to play. Let's spend, let's say, between three to five minutes and see what um, are the variations that's come that's coming up for us. Um, what is the starting, um, you know, just the first starting variations and starting evaluations that's flowing in. It doesn't have to be necessarily the final conclusion. So one of the things I'm going to give as a small tip is make sure you calculate what is more and more relevant. So I've been, um, I mean, this is one of the things that I usually try to focus on. That is, if you are going to spend 10 minutes and if in 10 minutes you're calculating the most relevant variation, you'll probably find the answer. But most of the calculation problems happen because in those 10 minutes, eight minutes, we are calculating something that's probably relevant and you spend only like two minutes or like 30 seconds on the right variation and you don't have enough time to make good decisions. Either you decided quickly or you came to it in the in much later or something like that. So every move has to make logical sense for white and for black as much as possible. Try that in your mind because we don't want to brute force every possible variation. I'm looking at G4, I'm looking at F5. No other move seems that important to me. Okay, I can always move my king back anywhere. I can go king D3, king E3, king F3. These are all possible. Um, okay, but I'm not so... I mean, so keen on this. Usually what I do is I play these kind of moves in my head only if it's necessary, right? If I find a reason why I cannot move forward with an active plan, that's when I'm going to step back and say, wait, maybe I can use my time and go back. This is why I said use your um, understanding of the position to come up with these moves to calculate, right? So two moves, F5 and G4. I, in chat, I predominantly saw most people play G4, yeah? Except someone, only one variation I think I got. Uh, Tori, do you want to tell me your variation? Um, so the variation that I was thinking was f5, g takes, f5, check, okay. king takes, f5, mm -hmm. and then c4, uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, and okay. I wasn't sure if black would play king e7, there or c3 it's white stone there yeah so f5 pawn takes king takes and then you played c4 pawn takes pawn takes now it's white stone mm -hmm. uh, so what do you expect white to do actually now that i think about it i might go back to e4 fair enough that seems like the only move right yeah because if you play g4 black is easily winning the pawn race mm -hmm. so i with there's still more calculation what is your rough assessment at king e4 point when you come back to king e4 King e4. Would you say win, draw, loss? What is it? What's the result? Just an assessment. Mm. It's okay. Don't, it, you should always intuitively make a decision. There's nothing wrong. I think it might be a draw, but I think it might depend on who wins the pawn race. Okay. So you still have to calculate a little bit more, but for now you think it's a draw. That's fine. Um, so the idea is you, you should make these kind of intuitive calls to actually calculate after that, right? Don't rely on these intuitive calls as your final decision. But these intuition, this intuition is what leads me into more calculation. So that's what I do. I will be looking at some variation and one move will feel like this looks good. Um, I might be winning it. So then I'll sp spend more time calculating it, right? So definitely F5 takes, takes C4, takes, takes King E4. I would say it looks very good for white actually. Um, because if I stop the C4 pawn, the black king is so far away from this pawn, there's a very high chance for me to win the game. So... The only question is, can white stop the C-pawn at that point? Black can play king C5, king B4 and try to move in. What do you guys think? Can white stop the pawn? Let's try to see if we can get a final conclusion on that, on that variation. You can again chat and tell me. So the variation we're looking at, again, I don't want to move the pieces. I want to try to push you all as much as possible to calculate. 
So f5, pawn takes, king takes, c4, pawn takes, pawn takes, and king e4. This is the variation we are looking at. If black goes this way, it's irrelevant. We don't have to worry about it. But black king will play king c5, king b4, king b3. Yeah, king c5. Now what does white play? Let's continue after king c5. Or you can also tell me an actual result in that variation, guys. Avan, you're doing good. Maybe you can just tell me the variation, Avan. Let's see if I can. All right, Avan, just tell me the variation. Finish that variation for me. Well, after king c5, mm -hmm. the logical move is still king, king e3. Very good. And, I mean, I guess he'll have to go then king um, b4, maybe. Fair like, enough, okay. Then we go king d2. Mm -hmm. um, the only question is, did I stop the pawn? Yeah, because if you if you get to c1, you pre uh, which you are going to get to, then you pretty much stop the pawn and you can promote. You can push the g pawn and the king has to run back. The king right? has to run back and yeah, then you win the c5 pawn maybe. In the yeah, it's still a little bit of calculation. So for example, after king b3, um, king c1, there's king c3, g4, king d4, king c2, king e4, king c3. King f4, king takes c4, and king takes g4. So to visualize, everything is gone on the board, and uh, white king is on c4, black king is on g4. So that kind of tells you we're, we're winning because after king here, king f5, king b6, king a6, you take the pawn and you can immediately go to king b7 and block. I know it's a long variation, but it's all just king moves and pawn moves. So hopefully it's not that difficult. But you have to be very careful though, because you skip one move, you skip one move, the whole result will change you because you beat. You white one by one move, right? So what if king d5? Oh, well, yeah, we can we can calculate that too. So now that we have calculated this long variation, I'm quickly going to show this, yeah? So takes, takes, c4, capture, capture, king e4. And now black doesn't have a lot of options. Uh, without c4, you want to play king d4. Definitely, we are going to look at it, yeah. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, that's kind of an important variation. We are just quickly looking at c4 because I think we started with that variation. And it's easy to conclude at this point. So this is the place where I would actually put this aside. If you're spending too much time in your calculation, you want to spend time on the most challenging moves, right? So at this point, I already feel like white's doing much better because if you go king d5, go here. And again, I'm much faster, much faster. All I have to do is take and play king b7 and I'm not going to calculate the whole sequence, right? So a couple of things, pointers before we continue on this is that I saw some variations with king c6. I saw some variations with c4. Um, I think these are moves you should learn to avoid as much as possible. Because for example, if I play g4, this is really not a variation you want to spend your time on. I mean, this you should probably look at it for like 10 seconds or 15 seconds. So logically speaking, it just doesn't put up any fight. I just lost a pawn, why, right? You should immediately ask yourself, why is black giving up that pawn? Of course, bad. Right? So you go back. I mean, you should see it, but don't spend too much time on it. Right? The same thing with King C6. I don't see any logic on this because I'm going to the wrong side. Yeah. What am I really achieving? I could even play King E5. Or of course I could play F5. I mean, I don't really know exactly the evaluation of this because, um, but I just know that it doesn't seem to help Black's cause. Yeah. So let's not calculate that. Um, King E6 is the move I would calculate, of course, has to be the main move and someone wrote this variation after f5 pawn takes pawn takes in fact i think more than one person wrote this variation king d5 and now black actually seems to be on time after c4 because pawn takes pawn takes king takes c4 king here and then the rook pawn is still there for white but i just reach c8 on time and i'm able to get myself a draw yeah so the point is your direct g4 and f5 is not working so let's just calculate f5 pawn takes f5 king d5 Okay, so I'm going to play f5 on the board, takes, takes, and now we are calculating. c4, we, are, we know is lost. So we have to calculate king d5. Again, I'm going to set the timer for, let's say, three minutes. Now let's do... Um, so Aradi, you're talking about king d5 instead of king c5. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help. Oh, I played king e4, by the way. You cannot play king d5 at that point, yeah? So let's start the timer. Again, three to five minutes. So two things that I told you, one is use your intuition to pick the right variations that make sense for white and black. 
and spend your time on that. You have only five minutes, right? I want you to spend that five minutes on the most challenging or important variation. That's right, Avan. King D5 is very interesting, but yeah, there are some problems with that too. The queening square is G8, which is a check. That is something very important and you have to pay attention to. Yeah, you don't have to look at C4 anymore. C4 is lost. Uh, let's see, Alexander, I want to clarify. Um, Alexander, is that variation? Are you? I wanted to have a conclusion on that. What uh, is your conclusion? Actually, I realized it, I don't think it's like a one second any check. That's winning for white, yeah? Yeah, I realized so. So B4 is terrible. So. Yeah, that's not, that's more pawns on the board is bad for black, right? Yeah. The thing I think I like the variation, but it seems like uh, at some point you have made a very um, bad choice for one player. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, you can try to improve on it, of course. Yeah, this is not the final variation. You can always improve on it. So Aradhya, I think you should definitely calculate very precisely. I mean, I, idea wise, it's okay, but still give me variations. Okay, I'm getting a lot of variations. We still have a couple of minutes. You can take your time still. So Sarva, I think you have a variation. Again, I think the same way like uh, um, I mean, you, you have also kind of made a move that seems to be bad for black. So you'll have to try to fix that. Let's see, Aradhya, I want to see what your variation is. So Aradhya, you've done the same thing, Sarvag. I think you have picked a move for black that seems to be a little bad. You'll have to, you can still improve. Yes, Sarvag, you're right. That's the improvement. Avan, I know you've given me a long variation, but can you also do that sequence that you wrote as a variation? Because I think there is still more interesting things to that. Now, Aradhya, in your previous variation, just fix the last end, right? Usually for long variation doesn't work or if there are issues, I want you to step back and look at um, what happened from the end, like the last known result. Don't change very early um, towards the end. So Avan, yeah, so whatever you gave me as a sequence, I want you to give me that as like a variation because you didn't tell me black smooth, right? You gave me a full sequence for white smooth and how white's winning. The good thing is I'm seeing more and more people typing in chat. I like that. I would like every one of you to get involved. I have not seen some of you uh, with your moves yet. So Alexander, I don't think I can play that um, move in your variation because after King D5 and G4, be very clear on where the King is, where the pieces are to make the decision. I don't know what famous study you're talking about. This is just from an actual game. But of course, there are some relations and connection to uh, theoretical positions. Let's see what Nathaniel has. Okay. I think we've spent about six minutes. So I'm going to um, pause here. Very good. Again, lots of interesting variations. And, um, and I think we're pretty close to the clear evaluation, but still there are some confusions, I think. Um, so let's see if somebody wants to talk about it. Raise your hand if you want to talk about it and I can try to call on you and see if you want to say something. I mean, I'm, let's see, let's go with Aradhya. Okay, so like my idea was that, um, so like we go, I was thinking he's probably gonna go King D5 to stop King E4. So I thought he's gonna, um, so like after King D5, um, we're, I think, almost forced to go G4. Okay, good. Um, so go on with the moves of the very full variation. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of long. Okay, so G4, C4, B takes C4, B takes C4, G5, King C, I mean, pawn C3, G6, okay. mm -hmm. um, C2, G7, C1, Queen, G8, Queen, um, and he is a check, so he has to go, like, King D4, and yeah. And so just to catch up with everyone, the king is on D5, um, black queen's on C1, and you're queening with a check, yeah? Yeah. And he goes King D4, then we go... Um, king D4 is the only move. By the way, I just yes. want to point this out to everyone. So some of you are playing King C5 and King C4. Again, you have to pause to see if I'm playing a move and losing the queen, is there anything else I can do, right? So King yeah. D4 is the only move, okay? Yeah, so then we go queen d8 check. If he goes king e3, we have queen g5. So he has to go king c3. Then okay. we have, um like, queen, we can go queen c7 or queen c8. I think both are the same. 
-hmm. And then he goes king d2. We go queen takes c1, king takes c1. So then um, we um, win since we just, like, the line is king e5. He goes, like, king b2, um, king d5, king a3, king c5, king a4, and king b6. And, yeah, we're just winning there since okay. we get to b2. So I would say that you have given me about 99% of the answer right, except one part. There is only one part I need in this particular variation. Let's say if you have to look at this variation and say if we have, do we have an exact uh, evaluation and perfect moves for both sides? I think there is one part that's left. Can anyone jump in and add to that? So we both queen. So there's a check. The king goes to d4, you play queen d8 check. I cannot go to e3 far enough because of the diagonal. I have to go to the c file c3. So you play check, you'll trade. You go take the pawn and you win. This is the basic sequence of the variation. There is only one part that's a little bit neat. I wouldn't even say it's really wrong. It's just some kind of small tweak. Uh, king d3? I don't think I can even go to king d3. I don't think king d3 is even possible. Right? So let's see. Let's ask a question from a different... Thing. I know most of you know this. Uh, I'm going to share something new for a second. Let's set up this basic endgame, which everybody I'm hoping knows in this class. Do we all know this endgame? Yeah, this is one of the basic king and pawn games, right? Who wants to tell me the answer to this one? Someone who's not answered before. I would prefer to hear from someone who's not Ah, so Aradhya was referring to this, but yet Aradhya, in your answer, you did not exactly give me this. So Evan tells me you can tell me this. Evan, go on. Um, king e6. Okay. Um, and then king b3. Oh, yeah. And then king b5. Okay. And then you go in, yeah? Yeah. So the whole idea is you don't do this because I will end up doing something like this. Yeah? Yeah. That's right. So this is going to be a simple draw if you do that. And that's why you have to go king e6 and king d5, right? Yep. So let's go back to your variation and see if this is relevant in the position in the end game that we, we were seeing with Fisher. So Aradhya, you did not do this though in your line. Yeah. Um, at the end of the variation, this is actually kind of very important. Um, you have to definitely do this. And also, it doesn't make sense for you to give variations for black like this, right? That's not really relevant. I mean, why would I go to king a3 and king a4? Now, a lot of you did this, right? So the main key idea is that you have to play king d4, uh, sorry, king e4, king d4, or king e5, king, um, or king e5 and king d4. Doesn't really matter, right? So now let me play this out, yeah? So king d5 here, takes, takes, push here, g6 here, push, we queen, and then queen with the check. And now again, only move, you play the check, only move, you play anywhere check, doesn't matter. And wherever I go, you trade queens. And then here, this is a very tiny, subtle part here. All right, Madison, if you have a tournament, good luck. Bye. So there's a subtle part. You can play king e5 too, but the next move is the most relevant part. You have to go to d4. And Avan, you gave the same variation. You went king e5, king d6. That's the reason I told you do the variation, right? If you play king e5 or king e4, I'm okay. But when I play king d2, you have to play king d4, right? If you play any other move, I'm going to end up making a draw because uh, suddenly my king is going to come in, yeah? My king will start going around and the same exact study pretty much ends up in a draw. So there's not a lot of times you study something very much in a in a thing and then part, comes up as a part of a variation, one of these, right? So when I saw this position, I was very happy. I was I thought this is very interesting in an end game to see that there is a very famous idea that we know that kind of can happen in this variation, right? So, and you have to know this in your calculation. So then what is the conclusion? Let's go back again. So what are we talking about here? So um, the next step. So we know um, there are some problems. So I'm going to give, let's say another, um, let's do another three minutes. 
what is it that black should do here who can come up with something that is different again there's not a lot of legal moves somewhere black should try to do something different and try to improve uh you can think about it a little bit don't rush i mean avan are you talking about in this move in this position well you cannot do that avan because you'll be in check so give me a variation so give me a variation so let's take the 3 minutes think about where we can find an improvement he can try that aradhya try to see if that makes sense in a variation though sir wagner again i want to know where if you give it to me like a variation it will be clear for me is it in this position avan can you give it to me as a variation because i think at this point it, everything will make sense more with the variation yeah aradhya are you sure if that in, is a draw you have to think about it yeah will that end game be a draw queen against the b2 pawn is usually a win yeah in this case i also have an extra pawn so definitely it should be a win for white if black doesn't queen and avoid queens then it's definitely a win for white yep avan you're right that just transposes nothing changed you did try something differently there's nothing wrong with it but it just transposes aryan that's right aryan we saw that line in this um, main variation that we just saw right i have the queen d8 queen c8 idea in most of these variations king e7 seems too slow too passive i'll easily move my king over this side and it doesn't look like i can make any um chance at all all right so um actually black won this that's unfortunate fisher blunder so i don't know how i mean if you look at the blunder you'll realize it's probably a super time scramble i cannot explain anything else in that position so um I, I we'll we'll see that okay so let's uh, stop does anyone have any idea that's all i mean i'm not even asking for an answer i'm trying to see is there anywhere i can look for an improvement king and pawn games are so tricky with calculation where can i look for an improvement okay sarvagna i like your idea of trying to go b4 and c4 yeah but the problem is i get to play king e4 so if you start with b4 i'm going to play king e4 and once my king gets to e4 i actually stop your pawn so if you play c4 i take and now i'm actually stopping your pawn right so if you play b3 i play here if you play this i play here doesn't really matter you don't get to queen the pawn so i will easily win the game so b4 idea is possible but once i play king e4 you know it's not going to work right so king d5 and then b4 let's try that king d5 here and then you go b4 problem is you play check and you have to take so close enough but that's a problem yeah or did we do something that could be improved did i make any move that could have that we could have improved on and also one more thing i noticed when you play c4 i don't need to i can just bleep push yeah if you take um by the way you are right after takes i don't have to take i can play king d4 or king c5 but the problem is i can just push and you can take or push i don't really care because i queen with check yes sorry and i I've, i've been seeing the messages you're sending i have no idea what you're talking about in some of the earlier ones um yep daniel sorry has the final idea that's correct so the whole point is you want to play the c4 and b4 which most of you have this idea you just don't know how to execute it right um king d4 is the move so you play king d4 first and you play c4 but the thing is c4 you don't take take if you take take it transposes avan right so after g5 um you play c4 now if you do pawn takes pawn takes we will transpose to the same queen in game where the queens get traded and black loses but the difference is pawn takes you play b4 so and then now g6 b3 g7 p2 after queen you queen with a check and that's how black can get a draw so king d5 followed by king d4 yeah so aradhya you had the idea so i think a lot of you had the idea but you had to have the correct execution right so king d5 is absolutely necessary because you have to stop king e4 and king d4 is absolutely necessary because you do not want b takes e4 check or you don't want queen check so king d5 and king d4 are very important 
Okay, so what happened in the game is kind of strange. After B4 here, Fisher ended up playing C5. So I really don't know how. I mean, G6 is just a draw. But after C5, now Black Queens would check. So he just lost the game. So I'm just uh, thinking it was some time trouble or some some problem um, because he's already grandmaster by this time. This is a draw, Aradia. So this end game is actually a draw. Uh, it's a very interesting game and pawn game starting here. G4 will also lead to a draw. F5 will also lead to a draw. But F5 seems like like a very strong um, candidate for trying to win because after it takes takes, Black has to find this very precise idea of King D5, King D4. Otherwise, White wins. Yeah. All right. All right, very good. Um, so now let's see another end game. Yeah, this is was I thought was very very interesting end game. Uh, there's another one from the U.S. Championship in 1959 where he had a very very interesting. Um, yeah, these king and pawn end games have so many small subtle things, so you have to be very very careful about them when you do the calculation. I like them because it's very good for your calculation. It's very good for doing the candidate moves. It's um, it good, it's good for your discipline in calculation, right? To find the answers. And it's also your foundation. So it's something you should definitely spend some time on. Now, this was, a, again, a very interesting end game that I saw that Fisher was playing white against Arthur Bisquare from the US Championship 1959. Again, he's already a grandmaster by now. Um, and... Uh, I mean, white does have an outside pass pawn, but black has a very um, advanced pawn, and black also has this a5, b5, b4 idea. So black actually did rook d5. So I would think it's a little questionable. I I don't know if I would have done this um, because after rook d5, I don't know if black can win. So I might have, I don't know, maybe rook check and rook g1 is possible, or I mean, I think this should be an easy draw, but trading rooks seem a little dangerous to me. But okay, I mean, not too much. Um, black should comfortably still make a draw. So king d5 was played. King e3 was played. King e5 was played. And now, okay, this uh, pawns on the queen side are the key right now. Um, actually, <coughs> the problem with g5 now is uh, what happens after g5, king f5. Yeah, this should be okay, I think, right? Takes, takes, and I just go in. Because my pawns are kind of blocking, you have to go around. I should have enough time to make a draw here, I believe. So king here, king here, even if I just go here and take, take, we should make a draw because if you push the pawn, I push the pawn. If you take the pawn, I take the pawn. And we got ourselves a simple draw. So what happened was, okay, Fisher waited and a5 was played. Now, there are two kind of ways for black to play here. I would say there's a more straightforward draw. Let's see what would you do as black for a draw. Or more importantly, let's give a small variation here. I'm going to set the timer again between three to five minutes. A small variation. I don't think this should be very difficult. It should be pretty straightforward. It's Black's turn to play, Angela. So let's start with Black's move. So I believe so. Let's see. Yeah, King E3 has been played. Right now it's Black's turn to play. You can always take a snapshot of this position and try to calculate later. So let's start with the assumption that black is trying to simplify here because black is a little bit of a dangerous situation. If, if the white king somehow gets into the king side, I, I mean, queen side, I lose all my pawns. So if you're playing black, I think your goal should be to simplify, I'm guessing, yeah? Interesting. Nathaniel, I want to know why you started with uh, like a little bit of a waiting move. I feel like you could have maybe done that without... And also, why is white uh, white waiting here? Just to give you a small idea for everyone, the reason why this G5 did not work, um, this G5 did not work here, is because when I went here, these pawns were far away. I could not access them, and black had enough time to come back and catch up. So keep that in mind when you push your pawns. What white is going to do, you have to keep that in your mind. So after, let's say, A5 and King E3, your goal should be to try to um, eliminate all the pawns as black, but white will also try to play g5 at some point to try to get the king in. Daniel, I would say that's a good variation. Can you tell me um, your variation? We can stop the timer here. So, Daniel, go on. I'm not actually sure if this works, but I guess. And I was actually thinking, because I'm pretty sure Nathaniel probably said b6, and I was thinking that too, but 
I guess time is of the essence because G5 is coming either way. So why won't play King F3? So I guess we just start with B5. Exactly. I like that thing. The only reason like you pointed out is that if I start with this, you are right. Time is a little bit uh, thing and you want to eliminate pawns as soon as possible, right? If you ever end up losing two pawns, you're going to lose a game. And also yeah. I would usually not save these moves for later. I won't calculate B6 unless it's really required. Yeah. So B5 is the move. Okay, go on. Let me thought G5, B4. Logical. And again, very logical. Because if I play this, you play this and it looks like white's winning. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is It looks pretty bad for uh, black. Okay, so B4 makes sense. And then G6. G6 again makes sense. And here I thought we had time to take. Uh, yeah, actually you could take as well. You're right. Takes, takes and go or go directly. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just king F6. And then king here. Yeah. And then take six, this should clearly be a draw, yeah? Because, oh. Um, oh, wait. Is it? Did I miss something here? This looks lost. Mm. Okay, king b5, king e6, and after take six, I'm lost, yeah? Yeah, this is definitely lost, yeah. Wherever I go, I'm lost. Okay, so let's go back. Um, so black needed to oh, fix something. Like a4? No, no, wait, what? Oh, king f6. You can't take, maybe. So king f6, king here. It has to still be a capture at some point, right? So a4, hold on one second. I'm trying to oh, see where, where did we miss something. So after this, b4 and uh, g6, king here, king here. Some of you are suggesting a4 here. Is this No, a4 here is not possible. At which point, Awan, are you talking about a4? Not so sure. Okay, let's go back. Um, let's just clarify this. Okay, b5. G5 and uh, B4 is correct. King F5 would be really losing. And here G6 is the move we're looking at, right? G6. What am I missing here? Okay, I'm going to spend a minute to look at it. Um, this doesn't look like I'm going anywhere with any of this. Huh, this looks pretty lost to me because the B3 ideas don't seem to work. Pawn takes, pawn takes, this should be an easy draw because after king d4, I'll have c3, yeah? Let me go back for a couple of seconds. So maybe b5 doesn't actually work, guys. Um, I felt like I calculated b5 to be a draw and I felt like um, that's just possible, but it looks like there is some trick to this. Okay, there's a reason why I guess black played this very interesting move. Black played a4 in the game, which is the end game I won't actually talk about. I thought I can just show probably an easier draw, but I'm going to come back to this. I, I'm not 100% convinced. I'll think about it, but I don't want to spend too much time just me calculating in this class. So um, so it's very interesting to still maybe explore B5 a little bit. But in the game, A4 was played, which is quite interesting, actually, because this leads to a very, very interesting king and pawn in game, which I was not aware of before and until I saw this particular game or position. Yeah. So white has a very simple way of picking up this uh, pawn now. So g5 was played, king here, king here, takes, takes. So white has easily picked up c4 and white is going to either pick up a4 or b7. So now um, let's quickly see. It doesn't make sense to pick up b7 because if I go king b5, king here, king b6, king here, king takes pawn, king c2. If you come back, my pawn is faster. If you push, my pawn is faster. So clearly I have to pick up a4, yeah? King b4, king e3. King takes and King D2. This end game turns out to be quite interesting than what we would expect. Yeah, we would expect White to be probably winning in this one, right? Much, much simply. How about this? Let's do some calculation here. This is the end game I really wanted to spend some time on. So, what should White try to do? Let's do some calculation. Again, let's spend some time here. Okay, Royal, I'm not giving you control of my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is the end game we're going to calculate. Let's see. What do you guys think? What? I mean, it looks like white should be able to try to win this one. I have an extra pawn. My king is very well placed. Your king is not even in a defensive position. Uh, it's kind of trying to create some problems on the, on the side. But okay, let's see. What can you do as white? And let's calculate a little bit. I think the most straightforward variation is what 
I thought we should calculate, which is again to try to be as aggressive as possible. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so now we'll just actually I'm going to call on someone to try to do it. So Sarvagna, you have C4. Can you um, calculate C4 for me? Oh yeah. Um, I mean I wasn't really looking at it that much, but C4, that's okay. We can calculate it together. Yeah. Yeah. C4 king C2 probably, and then maybe B4 king C3 king B5, but there might be king B3 C5. Um. We actually, no, that's, that's a draw. Never mind. So the first situation we can establish is that the king's on b5, pawn's on c5 and b4, and black king's on b3. That yeah. looks drawish, yeah? Because if you play king a5, I'll play king c4, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't get to play b5 because I'll pick up the pawn. And if you play king a4, actually, that's not so clear. Are you sure if it's a draw? How about this? Let's do that, yeah? Let's play c4. I want to see this. B4, king here, king here, king here, and the pawn for share. Let's actually calculate this. I want to be very clear that this is a draw. And if it's a draw, exactly, can you can you play it precisely? So if like king c3, then like c6 is just a draw, and then... Well, I won't play c6, yeah? c6 is a draw, I agree. King a, king a5, king c4... Um... King a4? So we're looking at king c3, king a5, king here, and king here. Now what? I think we're still going in good track. Uh, I mean, you, if you find a move, you can tell me. Anyone else can tell me too. If anyone else has a move, let me know. I think black is still doing okay, actually. But has to be a little precise. Can we make a draw? Looks like Evan, you're in your graduation. So for black, what are the possibilities you see here, Sarvanga? Um, actually, what about b5, king c5? King a5, b6, king a6. Wait, b5? Um, so you want to play b5 for white? Uh, yes, if it was like white's move, but actually. If it's white's turns, okay, let's say you play b5, take, what happens? King a5. King a5, okay, so that's, but I just simply go back king c4. Oh, I mean, right. I see what you're trying to do. You want me to play b6, but I won't, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll play king here, and when you go king b6, I'll go king b4. Right. Mm -hmm. I should be able to hold. So your main question right now is you have to move your king. You have king b5, king b4. I mean, king d3 is lost. You'll play b5, right? King c3 is lost. So you have only two options. Which one would you play? I think it should be logical. And again, anyone else can answer too. It's not only for Sarvagna. All of you can answer. Where will you go? King d5 or king d4? Why like king d5? Because you're getting closer. You're getting closer. But what do you expect white to play after king d5? Um... King B5. And now you're in trouble, yeah? So Benjamin is pointing it out that you have to play King D4 because when I play King B5, you have to play King C3. Oh. Right? So this is how you hold this together. All right. Thank you, Sarvagna. So the idea is in this, once you reach this structure, you can kind of go back and forth. It's like a, a corresponding squares. I don't know if you have uh, learned corresponding squares. That's basically what this is, yeah? So if King goes to A5, you go to c4 again because you have to stop um, this move and you have to stop this move so you have to be on c4 if you go king d4 i'll play king b6 lost right and if you go anywhere else i'll play b5 and you're lost so king c4 is the only move yeah and if i play here again king b4 is the only move because you should be ready to go to d5 and to c3 for example if i go here now it's easy for you to make a draw because you can go in go in and make a draw and if i ever go back you can just go back here so the interesting thing is this b4 and c5 structure is actually a draw, right? So given what you know about this, the one thing that was clear is black or white cannot easily play c4 and c5. So like king c2, this king here, and you would be in a little bit of a trouble if you play c5 now. And uh, I don't know if you can play king c5 and the other pawn up. Probably same problem though, yeah? I think this will just be the exact same thing the other way around. Ah, but now I can win the, with this idea. This should be winning because I move the king around. So let's go back to be very clear. Maybe this is the move. You have to be very precise again, right? So king c5 is a move I cannot allow. I have to play king d4, forcing you to play c5 and go king c3. So let's go back. So c4 cannot be played. In the game, king d3 was played. 
again it's very fascinating that you know you can be down a pawn into the king and pawn game with the king on d2 and still make a draw king d3 was played now c4 and king d2 so if king d4 happens i can easily win with this move because now watch this there is no king c3 or king d4 so if you go king c2 i can even just go here so king d2 again if you play c5 i go king d3 again right so let's try um actually let's see which variation we should try um in the game i think fisher just kind of moved back and forth and he was waiting a little bit but i want to see this position okay how would you make a draw here let's do this just a couple of last questions and we can wrap it up guys this is a very interesting end game um let's see how can black draw here again you have to be very very precise tell me what is the first move you're looking at that should be a little obvious i hope there are only two real moves for black here one of them should not be a real move nathaniel very nice the only problem is so king c2 is the only move correct i cannot play king d4 king b5 now again very very tricky situation if you take the pawn king b6 is lost you go king b3 yeah now the problem is i will play king a5 i will not play king b6 so if i play king a5 you are in trouble because now it looks like your only move is king to c4 and i will play king to b6 and when you play king to b4 i'll play b3 and you're losing with um zugzong yeah so your idea is very correct but i think slightly in the wrong side can anyone suggest a move again it's not very difficult because black doesn't have a lot of moves yeah you cannot take the pawn you cannot go king b3 then there's only one move left what is that very nice guy. king b3 is the only move so it turns out again corresponding squares i have never seen this in game before i have studied so many king and pawn games guys this is the first time i actually seen this in game and i was kind of fascinated by it when i saw this that actually black holes this and king d3 now again corresponding squares if you go king b6 i play king c4 when it's white's turn to play because now you have to play this and i play this and it's, again it's white's turn to play that's a key and we have a draw and if you play king a5 i attack the pawn and i'm trying to remember actually no if you play king a5 i can play this move sorry sorry not king a5 x king d4 even i'm so confused even after all of this sitting i have to play king d4 and when you play here i could play king d5 and king d4 i think this is still should be a draw because if you play king b6 i still have king c4 and if you have b3 i have king c3 and if you have king here i have king b4 again very very important timing yeah so it's crazy so you go king a5 king here and if i ever come here you come back to b3 so black has to maintain this kind of very interesting dance here <laughs> with the corresponding squares to actually make a draw but i'll tell you what happened in the game so fisher kind of tricked <laughs> and won the game he played king a4 king c2 king a3 no big deal black did find king d3 and then king d2 again actually here king d2 again is a draw but he blundered with b6 and that one move really kills it so b6 is just totally unnecessary black played this and now Uh, the b4 idea comes in so after king d2 he plays king here so if you play king d3 there's king b5 if you play king c2 there is b4 so i would really encourage all of you to study this particular end game position actually starting from here this is the end game position that i was kind of interested in and uh, you know every day we learn a new end game new ideas so this is what i learned today trying to teach you guys um with that i think we can wrap it up if you guys have any questions you can tell me i would be happy to answer some questions if you have any aryan you're typing it oh now you're actually typing it to everyone you've been doing the private chat to me by mistake <laughs> not sure who it was intended to 